Welcome to the YouTube video channel for my new book, Seed of Israel, DNA Guide to Tracing Your Jewish Ancestry, available on Amazon in ebook and paperback versions. There are links below to order your copy. And be sure to hit that subscribe button to get more videos like this. I want to talk about some information that I left out of the first edition and that will be included in the second edition. There is a Jewish diaspora group that I want to briefly describe here that isn't mentioned in the book, in the chapter on uh, Jewish diaspora groups. The Bukharan Jews. Who are the Bukharan Jews? Uh, the Bukharan Jews lived in Central Asia and are named after the Emirate of Bukhara, uh, which was an Uzbek state that existed from 1785 to 1920 in what is uh, today uh, modern day Uzbekistan. Uh, European travelers uh, who visited Central Asia in the 16th century called uh, these Jews Bukharan. Uh, the actual community called themselves Israelites. Um, I just wanted to uh, read a quote from uh, a little a passage from uh, Wikipedia and uh, with a little bit of context about the history of uh, the Bukharan Jews and uh, where some of the theories are about where they might have come from. Um, according to some ancient texts, there were Israelites that, be that began traveling to Central Asia to work as traders during the reign of King David of Jerusalem, as far back as the 10th century BCE, when Persian King Cyrus conquered Babylon. He encouraged the Jews he liberated to settle in his empire, which included areas of Central Asia. In the Middle Ages, the largest Jewish settlement, settlement in Central Asia was in the Emirate of Bukhara, which again is uh, in modern day Uzbekistan. Uh, among Bukharan Jews, there are two ancient theories of how Jewish people settled in Central Asia. One theory is that Bukharan Jews may be descended from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Issachar, uh, of the lost tribes of Israel who may have been exiled during the Assyrian captivity of Israel in the 7th century BCE. Uh, Issacharoth, um, which has different spellings, is, also, is a co uh, common surname. Uh, modern sources have described the Bukhara Jews as, for example, quote, an ethnic and religious group in Central Asia, claiming descent from 5th century exiles from Persia. Uh, the Bukharan Jews are considered one of the oldest ethno-religious groups in Central Asia, and over the years they have developed their own distinct culture. Uh, throughout the years, Jews from other Eastern countries, such as Iraq, Iran, Yemen, Syria, uh, Mor uh, Morocco uh, as well, uh, have migrated into Central Asia, uh, and they usually took the Silk Road. Um, Okay, that's a little about the Bukharan Jews. Again, they're going to be included in the second edition of uh, Seed of Israel, DNA Guide to Tracing Your Jewish Ancestry. Uh, now, I want to briefly discuss uh, something else that was sort of left out of the book, the first edition, and I want to get into a little bit here. Um, and that is uh, a French Jews and the origins of the Ashkenazi. Uh, in the book, I describe how the Ashkenazi Jews developed around 900 years ago in Rhineland uh, Fats or Rhineland Palatinate. Uh, in modern-day Germany, and uh, they're probably, uh, the descendants of the Ashkenazi uh, were probably Italkim, uh, which is a, a time for Italian Jews, uh, who migrated north from Lucca and Rome to Mainz, Spire, and Worms. Uh, this is, but this is just part of the story, um, which I, I didn't really get into as much in the book, and I'd like to uh, just briefly discuss it now. So when the Italian Jews migrated north, there were existing Jewish communities uh, in the Rhineland, and they were likely from Jewish mer merchants and traders who followed the Roman legions into Germ Germania and Gaul. Uh, Germania is present-day Germany, Gaul is present-day France. Um, there were also French Jews, in addition to the Italian Jews, um, in the early Middle Ages, who migrated to the Rhineland and who would eventually form the early Ashkenazi uh, community. Uh, and I just wanted to read this passage from the website Jewish Gen. 
the initial and the this article is about the grow, the development of Yiddish, the Yiddish language, but it's related to the development of the Ashkenazi. The initial growth of Yiddish began in Western and West Central Europe. At the turn of the ninth century, Charlemagne uh, from 742 to 814 invited the Jews of Southern France and Italy to the Rhineland to encourage economic growth. Uh, Jews had lived in the trading towns along the Rhine River as I mentioned earlier, uh, long before um, under the Roman Empire. Charlemagne's initiative caused trade and economic life to develop rapidly in the Rhineland. Then in the early Yiddish period, uh, the 10th and 11th centuries, uh, Jews from Northern Italy and Northern France, who spoke German, or excuse me, Jewish Romance languages, Old French or uh, Sorfatic, uh, uh, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, um, otherwise known as Western Laz, and Old Italian, or Italkic, uh, Southern Laz. Uh, they migrated to Rhineland towns along the middle and upper Rhine Valley in an area called Lothar, or uh, Loth Lotharingia. This area is close to present-day Lorraine. Uh, it is from these medieval, or excuse me, these Rhineland Jews that Yiddish originated. In their new surroundings, they adopted various medieval Germanic dialects of the region, mixing in their earlier Romance and Hebrew Aramaic elements. They wrote their new language in Hebrew characters from right to left. Um, and I wanna just give you a little bit of preview of the next video that I'm going to produce, which is going to be on some of the early origins of Jews in Europe. Uh, for my next video, I want to explore other possible Jewish migration routes to Europe from Judea, Babylon, Alexandria, and other Jewish center centers of antiquity. Other than Italian Jews migrating north, uh, were there other pathways to Central and Eastern Europe? Via Greece and the Balkans, perhaps? Or possibly Anatolia? And again, um, there were earlier Jewish communities in Europe. Um, I'm going to leave with this quote from the Roman Jewish historian Josephus. The Jewish historian Josephus confirms that as early as 90 Common Era CE, there was already a Jewish diaspora living in Europe, made up of the two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. Thus, he writes in his Antiquities, quote, There are but two tribes in Asia, uh, Turkey and Europe, subject to the Romans, while the ten tribes are beyond the Euphrates until now and are an immense, an immense multitude. And that's it, and we'll see you for the next video. And again, uh, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this, and uh, be sure to uh, check out the Amazon pages and uh, order your copies of Seed of Israel, DNA Guide to Tracing Your Jewish Ancestry. And that's it. Thank you.